Let's begin by taking a look at the basics of how MicroMesh works in ZBrush. So for MicroMesh to work, we need two uh, pieces of geometry. We need the actual mesh that's going to serve as the framework. Uh, then we need the mesh that's going to replace the polygons on that support mesh. So let's go ahead and bring in a simple plane just to begin with. I'll draw it out onto the canvas. And you can see it here. And let's go ahead and just make this a poly mesh. And I'll turn on polyframe so that we can see the individual polygons. As you can see in this particular plane, the polygons are nice and square shaped. That's not always going to be the case. In fact, probably a lot of the time you're going to have polygons that aren't exactly square, and you'll probably have some polygons that are you know, not all the same size. So keep that in mind as we progress through this. So the idea with MicroMesh is that at render time, using the best preview render, for every one of these polygons, we can render another object instead of this polygon. So we need an object to actually replace these polygons. So for this basic look here, we'll just use a simple sphere. And let's go ahead and make it a poly mesh. So we need to have a poly mesh for both of these. And we don't need to do really anything to this poly mesh sphere. We just need to go back to the plane. Now to turn on micro mesh, all we have to do is go down to geometry. And let's go to Modify Topology, and there's a button here for MicroMesh. And there's two buttons off to the side, too, that we'll look at a little bit later, Spin Edge and Align Edge. But let's go ahead and hit MicroMesh. What this will do is allow us to select the mesh that we want to include as the MicroMesh. In this case, it's our Polygon Sphere. It's going to give us an indication here. The MicroMesh is only going to be visible in the best preview render, so we need to turn that on in the render palette. So we'll say OK to that. So let's follow those instructions. Let's go up to the render palette. Let's go to Render Properties, and we'll turn on Draw Micro Mesh. Now you can see when I do that, and assuming that I have Polyframe on, you'll get sort of an indication of how that's going to actually create our geometry. So you can see here that that sphere is right in the center of those polygons and actually extends right to the edge of those polygons. So to be able to see the sphere, all we have to do is hit Best Preview Render. So we'll go ahead and hit that. It's going to render our polygon plane but in place of every one of those polygons, it's going to place a sphere. Okay, let me actually turn off uh, the polyframe so we can see that a little bit better. And we'll render that again. And now you can see every one of those polygons has been replaced by a sphere. Now this is part of the render so that if I now rotate around, that goes away. But I can always come back, re-render it from this particular angle. And I'll go ahead and let it render up from this angle. And you can see, same thing here. But we're still, we're not working with a bunch of spheres. We're still working with just a plane. So we could come in here and manipulate the shape of this. So getting our move brush. And we could come in and shape this. So you now we're working with a simple plane. But let's say we're working with something a little bit more complex, like a terrain or something like that. And then you could come in here re-render. And the spheres will be rendered along the uh, where the new polygons are, the position of the new polygons that we've moved around. So now you can see all that waviness is included within uh, in our new render. All right. Now, if we look at this, we'll be able to see the the position of each of those spheres. So you can see they're pretty much touching. Okay. Let me actually undo this so we can see this a little bit better in the middle here. Uh, the spheres are pretty much touching one another, so they go right up to the edges of the polygons. What if we want them to be a little bit smaller? Maybe we want to float a little bit more. We can go back to our micro mesh itself. And one uh, cool way that we can kind of see how this is going to fit within a polygon is just to append a plane to this. So I'm just going to append a plane 3D. And you can see that the sphere actually goes right up next to the edges. So what we can do is go ahead and let's just come down to deformation. And I'm just going to take the size of this sphere down a little bit. So I'll just take it down to something like that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and delete our plane here. Now we don't have to do anything else with this. We'll go back to our poly mesh plane. I'm going to reselect that micro mesh. So I'll choose micro mesh. And now we'll choose our 
uh, our new sphere, our sphere that we just scaled down. Okay, and we turn back on polyframe. Now you can see that that sphere lies a little bit more in the center of those polygons, so it doesn't go all the way to the edge. If I turn that off and render it. You can see that the the sphere is not going to go all the way to the edges and touch one another. They're going to be more floating, uh, more of a floating type of a grid. So you can have a little bit of control over how that's positioned. Now keep in mind that these are nice square polygons. If you had something that the polygons were more stretched out, for instance, come in here and say some of these polygons are longer well, you can get a very good indication here of what that's going to look like. It's actually going to stretch that out. So just think of that as uh, the, the micromesh as being applied to a square quad. And then any changes in the shape of that quad on our support mesh are going to be reflected in the shape of our micromesh. So if we have any polygons that are long and thin, that micromesh is going to be stretched along those because it's basically just replacing that particular polygon. And again, let me turn off our polyframes so we can see it. And so you can see those spheres are stretched out. So in some cases you may be able to take advantage of that fact and uh, to be able to create something that you need. Other times you'll want to try to get a nice um, clean quad uh, edge flow as much as you possibly can if you want to maintain the shape of your micro mesh. Now once you've got your micro mesh so that if you render it and it shows up you may in some instances want to actually turn that into geometry to be able to sculpt or output in another way. So there's actually a way to do that too. It's going to be located up uh, under the geometry. Right under reconstruct subdiv there's this convert BPR to geo. So with this um, rendered up we're going to go ahead and say convert BPR to geo. It's going to go through that process and now you can see instead of reverting back to that plane Instead of that plane, I now have a big grid of spheres. And I can come in and sculpt those and do whatever I want, mask them off. But now those are actual geometry. So if you need to bake that down into actual geometry, you can certainly do that. Keep in mind, if you're working with something that's really, really high res, you may get some warnings because um, just the fact that you know all of these meshes are being duplicated across every single polygon. So uh, just keep that in mind as you work with your uh, really high res meshes. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of working with MicroMesh. Let's go ahead and take a look at the orientation buttons in the next lesson as we take a look at uh, aligning and spinning our MicroMeshes around. So we'll take a look at that next.